Hello everyone and welcome to another Far Cry 5 speed build here on my channel today. Thank you so much for checking this video out and if you are not familiar with the series, what I do is post an entire speed build of a Far Cry 5 map as we have here from start to finish. But instead of using music, I give you my commentary the entire way through. And the hope is that it's A, more interesting, and B, it gives you an insight into my decisions as a map maker and the strategies I'm trying to use, the things I'm trying to accomplish. And so far, a lot of people really seem to enjoy the style of video. So that's what we have lined up today. Now, this map took me over 11 hours to build, but I do not regret a single second of that time because this is by far my favorite map so far, both in terms of gameplay and how it looks. Now, because we've got such a long video, we've got 50 minutes worth of footage to get through, I do have a bit of time to address a few things not so much related to the map before I focus on it alone. And I'll quickly run through those. The first thing, is thank you so much for getting this channel over 1,000 subscribers. I really cannot believe how quickly this has grown. I pinch myself every time I look at the number, but in honesty, it's not just the number. It's the support you guys show. It's how friendly you are. It's the fun we have talking in the comments. It really does mean so much, and I do appreciate it, guys. The second thing is that I have a Xbox club up for Far Cry 5 now. It's called the Sam Plays Test Team. I'll leave more info in the description. And the purpose of that is that once the game updates a bit more with a better lobby system, which is on the way I hear, and the club also grows in numbers, that we will be able to test the new maps I create like this one, and also hopefully have little gaming sessions where we play all the maps that I feature on this channel. Now, before I move on to the third and final thing unrelated to the map, a few people did request when I floated this club idea that I made a Discord server. Now, I've decided against that, and the only reason being is that the primary purpose of this club, which I probably didn't communicate too well in the previous episode, was to physically test the maps. Now, obviously, if we're all on different systems, even Discord does not allow us to play in the same lobby, it just allows us to talk. Now, because of that, I don't want anyone to feel left out, so please know that despite not making a Discord server, you are still welcome to share your map creations in the comments, the details of what you create, and I'm still gonna be here talking with you guys as I have been since the start of the channel, so I really hope you don't feel left out. and. I may look into Discord in the future, but I'm just trying to take one step at a time right now, and I hope you guys understand the decision behind that, or the reason behind that decision. The third and final thing I will say is that this video is the longest yet, and I received one comment, just one, saying that maybe the speed is a bit too high to follow on these speed builds. Now obviously it has to be quick to condense the 11 hours worth of building, but is it too quick? Now, if it is too quick, the only solution is to slow the speed of the fast forward down and then split the video into two parts that will be uploaded separately. Now that would probably mean something like two 40 minute videos. Now there, are, obviously the advantage of that is that it might be easier to follow from a visual perspective. The downside is that it is a much larger time commitment for you to follow the video and I'm not entirely convinced that's a solution because while you don't see this map in its sort of natural state here, I do upload gameplay of it a few days later. So let me know what you think. What should I do? Should I continue making these videos on a high speed setting like I have here? Or do you think it's really difficult to follow? Because if it is, I will consider using the two part structure. But truth be told, I'm leaning towards what we still have right now. But as always, it's your, you're the guys watching. You let me know what you think and I will make a decision based on that feedback. Now, okay, that's all out of the way. Let's focus on the map itself. So what I was trying to accomplish here was a very simply structured map, but one with great detail and one that really felt alive. It's going to be a sort of medium sized country town center or main street. And it's not meant to look abandoned necessarily. It's not meant to look new at the same time. 
It's just a country town, medium in size, that has probably seen better days, but is still a relatively nice place to be. You can see here I'm doing the groundwork. I had a very clear idea of how I wanted this map to play from the start. And as I get into the video, I'll explain a bit more about that. The thing that took a lot of time, it seems like every time I build a map, there's one aspect which surprises me and just how time consuming it is. And it was placing these footpaths. Now, obviously we don't have snapping in the Xbox or, or console version of the game in general, which made it more time consuming. But the real thing that held us up here was that I included some elevation in the design of the level, which might be a bit hard to see at this stage, but later on it will be quite clear. And I don't regret it for a second because the elevation really does this map make this map unique and different. But it was a huge pain <laughs> to put these paths in. And I think I spent a good two hours, in all honesty, getting these footpaths in and making them look somewhat acceptable in terms of the build quality. But as I say, once we get over that, the map comes together quite quickly. And again, don't regret anything because I really did enjoy building this map. And it's the one that has probably been most in line with how I intended it to be played. The previous maps I've created, there's always been some pretty major flaws that I couldn't discover until I played them in terms of how people reacted, how people played the map. But this one here, by and large, people have actually been excellent at playing the map the way I intended, not because they make a conscious decision to do so, but simply because the map was designed in a way that they behaved as I expected for once on one of my maps. Now, the purpose of the elevation change was that this little zigzag situation, I had the main road sort of going around, but the majority of the fighting is actually going to take place in a alleyway, which you can see me more or less about to create here. And the alleyway is the most direct route to the other team, which is why I think it is so popular and that is definitely how I wanted players to behave. So once I get the footpaths in, which I am nearly done doing, I work on the alleyway and hopefully then the whole map structure is a lot more clear to everybody. You can see I'm sort of framing the footpaths, I'm trying to make sure any gaps in the or under them were filled and hidden away. And then I move across to creating almost like a concrete wall to mask this elevation change and make it look like a heavy sort of industrial alleyway behind the service station that I eventually build. And this was a key design feature. I did want the alleyway to feel extremely claustrophobic. I did want it to feel like a bit of a risk to be in there, but that risk and that chaos really does achieve the sort of hallmark of this map, its original centerpiece that I wanted to create, and that was the idea of being in an outright war with the other team and being stuck in very close quarters. But the main road, which I you can see here, is a lot more open. So the main road actually serves as a flanking opportunity. Even though it's a bit more open, it's certainly feasible to go around and try and take the take on the other team from behind. And again, it does lead to really good gameplay. I had to play with the spawn points a fair amount, which is why this video took longer to complete than I expected, because I probably spent a good two hours actually just fine-tuning the spawn points and things like that. But the it was worth it, as I say, because it does play exactly how I intended. You can see here I'm trying to cover up any gaps with the roads. One of my gripes with Far Cry 5, and indeed the Far Cry games in general, is that the road tool is fantastic, but it always seems to be just a bit too narrow. Even on the wider setting of 8 meters, I think it is, the roads always do feel a bit too narrow compared to what they are in the campaign. So I've just used the generic asphalt, or asphalt texture to cover that up and make sure the roads looked like they went right to the sidewalks altogether. 
Now I'm placing the fences along the top here. This is probably where you're going to start seeing the map come together in terms of its final and overall design. And I had a little climb point up the middle there because while I did want two main alleyways, I did want the opportunity for players to be able to cut through the middle of the map if needed and get a bit of high ground on the enemy team. Now this is probably where it's going to start making more sense because you can see the alleyway I am creating using the fences. I didn't want it too wide because then it sort of lost its close combat and claustrophobic effect but I didn't want it too narrow either that's so players were getting frustrated being stuck on things and obstacles. But I'm really happy with the width we went with in the end it achieved what I wanted it to. And the fences also fit really well with the sidewalks around the edge as well. Now here you can see I place a little side road around the exit and this area becomes a scrapyard. When I first started building the map I actually intended on having this accessible to the players so that there were three routes. You could go through the alley, around the road at the top, or through the scrapyard. But my experience from the previous maps tells me that the lobby sizes in Far Cry simply aren't large enough to give players so many different routes. If you do that, players just end up not being able to find each other and it loses that intensity that I think I wanted to create here. But I don't regret creating that scrapyard because A, it gave me a fallback option if the map was claustrophobic. I could open it up and it was already constructed. But it does act as set dressing anyway because there are vantage points on the map where you can see over those fences and I wanted it to look like the town went a bit further than just the playable area. You can see here I'm sort of digging into the ground in the alleyway and the thing that I'm trying to do here is actually create almost like a construction, construction site feel. I was digging a hole as if they were trying to get to some pipes or something in the ground and I put some signs and things around later so it looks a bit more natural. But it actually acts as really, really good cover. You can almost use it like a miniature urban trench, if you will. But you can also still run over the top of it so it doesn't get in your way. And I see a lot of players using these ditches when I play the map, which is super rewarding to see because it's nice. You get a bit of diversity. You can take cover behind the natural sand bank I've built there or you can take cover behind all the sort of more urban objects that I place as well. And it just adds a bit of variety. It makes this alleyway feel quirky, a bit interesting. And yeah, just another feature of the map that I'm super, super happy with. I do spend a lot of time in this build swapping and changing the assets that I use because this is the first urban map I have ever created in Far Cry 5 and indeed the first one I have created in the Far Cry series because up until now we really haven't had properly accurate urban assets. They've always been more rural based but obviously with watchdogs included in the asset list we can do that now. I'm just trying to create different cover here. I normally don't detail the map until the very end but how this alley played out, the density of all the items, how much cover was available really did influence how much I would open up the other the other way around this map which was the main road. If the alleyway was super exposed and it was a bit not enough cover I was going to have to make the road up top quite cluttered obviously so players didn't feel like they were constantly exposed. So I needed to set this up first because I needed to know how this actually worked out in reality before deciding the more intricate design elements of the other parts of the map. But it did work out well because we had plenty of cover. It wasn't too chaotic in terms of objects. It wasn't cluttered. But it provided enough cover so that I could keep the road quite open and exposed and trying to encourage the players to go through the alley simply because there was more cover available. I put some shrubs around, play with the textures, add some vines coming off the little raised up area as well. And they just added a bit of greenery to the area as well, made it look nice and overgrown. And yeah, this whole alleyway, it seems strange to be proud of an alley, but I am very proud of this alley. It just worked out so well. 
And I hope when you see the gameplay footage in a few days' time that you agree that this has the nice balance between being exposed, but not being... Yeah, between having enough cover but not being cluttered is what I'm trying to say. I Those little signs there, I thought they would have physics attached to them, but it turns out those little tall cones were actually fixed and they created a few issues where players would get stuck on them so I do remove them later. I keep a few but they're out of the way so that they don't cause any issues or frustrating little collisions when you're fighting. Up here I wasn't sure originally what I would do. I decided on creating a little gas station if you will or a petrol station as we call them here in Australia. And this area here, again, is really quite exposed. Enough cover so that you can sneak around the place, but nothing too inviting. Again, just trying to make the players want to use the alley more than anything else. This, what I'm working on now, is probably my least favorite element of the map. In fact, I came back to it later. I had these little raised up platforms next to the next to the edges of the petrol station. I end up putting plants on them, but I feel like maybe I should have just pushed the fences further back to cover them and incorporated that into the petrol station. But yeah, I don't know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Players still avoid it, mainly. But if one side is more dominant, a lot of players do actually go up there and pick enemies off from the vegetation. So I'm going to continue to monitor that and if it becomes an issue, I might make adjustments later on. But I'm sure the gameplay you will see won't feature those because, as I say, I'm not even fully convinced I will make those changes yet. You can see here I'm placing all those plants in as we speak now. Uh, the, the reason why I did that was because it did look quite clumsy, those platforms without any vegetation. So putting the plants and trees on top of them just made it all look a bit nicer and added some greenery to the city as well. You can see now I'm working on the roads. I, truth be told, so much of the road network isn't actually in the playable zone. It's a really narrow but long map. But I did want to create the impression that these roads went off to other country towns, off into the rest of the world. So players felt like they really were in a small country town, a part of a much larger sort of county, if you will. So that's why I put so much effort into the road network around the town, because for me as a creator, knowing those roads really did go somewhere, allowed me to sort of create the natural environments around the town that I ended up doing. And I'm just making a few fine adjustments as well, because while the players do fight in sort of the main street, I did expand the city a little bit along each road as well. And from certain perspectives, you can, can see where the town ends, but it looks like a natural end. It looks like the town finishes the way it should, and it also looks like there's efforts gone into the environment beyond it as well. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that players feel the immersion I was trying to create. The footpaths, again, were a bit of a struggle. It was a bit of a pain to get these done. But once they're down and I start placing the buildings, I was very surprised at just how quickly the map came together. It was a rewarding map to play for sure, or a rewarding map to build, I should say. Next, I was trying to decide which building each player would spawn in. Originally, I was going to build a hotel, but they really were monumental in their size. So I end up gravitating towards a little bar. Well, it's not even a little bar, it's a medium-sized bar, not this one right here. I decided against this one because it had the balcony, and while I could block it off, I was very worried about players using the balcony and trying to snipe the enemy team, even from their spawn, because the spawn points really do face each other. And if the players could get a high vantage point, they would be able to pick each other from a mile off. The whole purpose of this map was to get players fighting in that alley and fighting aggressively. So I tried to remove any incentive whatsoever to stay anywhere near you, your spawn. Which is why I end up going for the single story building in the end as the spawn location. This is the very first main building I place and I just played with the corners first. I used the combination of the more concrete and the brick looking structures 
I was worried they would clash a bit, look a bit out of place, as if they'd come from different towns, but in the end, again, I really agreed with, with the style I chose. It was a nice balance between feeling... It, it was tricky. I didn't want to place any buildings that made this look like a city. It did want to... Or I did want to create the feel of a medium to large country town. So the buildings, I never really wanted above four stories. I wanted predominantly low, sort of concrete, worn out looking buildings more than anything else. And you can see I'm blocking off some rooms in some of the buildings as well. So players weren't going anywhere I didn't want them to. Because that was a tip I got in a previous video. Someone mentioned that on the larger buildings, instead of trying to fill every single room, why didn't I just block off the ones where I didn't want players going? So that was a great tip, and I used it to great effect in this video as well. And yeah, just continuing to place buildings down. I was chopping and changing quite a bit. I was very conscious of the main streets leading up to the alleyway because it really it has a huge impact on the play of the map i needed to make sure the players had a bit of cover leading up to the alleyway should the other team be dominating them a little bit and if they push them right back to their spawn i needed to make sure players weren't left in an exposed street so the buildings i was choosing really did focus on allowing the players to sort of cut into alleyways as they create with this building here i've got a little tiny little alleyway between the two right there but it's just enough to give players cover and somewhere to hide if the other team was really pushing them back into their spawn so that you felt like you had a fighting chance and you weren't just enclosed to a single building and you'll see later I actually even adjust the spawn points to help that cause even further because when I first built this map you will see in the editor that I made a few decisions which really damaged the gameplay the first one was having all the spawn points solely in the medium-sized bar that I create at the end of each street. Now the problem with that was that if the players did get crushed back into their spawn location, it was just three ways the players could come out, through the front door or two windows, and the enemy team could get nice and close to that building with no risk. So what I do later in the video, I move the spawn points, put them in some of the buildings on the side of the spawning roads. And that way, if the players got too close, they ran the risk of actually someone spawning behind them and being able to kill them very, very easily. So that was a design decision that I was pleased to make because I didn't get a chance to think that one through. And when I played the map, I realized how much of a flaw it was having all the spawn points in a single building. So that's my tip to you guys. Even if you are trying to create a map where it's quite clear which side or where you want players to come from, still give them a diversity of spawn points in case the enemy team push them back. Now you can see I'm just continuing to finish up the country town. I played with a bit, a, a bit is what I'm trying to say, a bit of vegetation, just to get an idea of what kind of style I would use for the natural environments around the town. Went with the sort of pine tree look just to give that town the proper Montana feel, if you will. And the next thing I'm doing is just trying to make a nice blend, as I said, of the larger, more bricky buildings and a few of the smaller timber ones as well. Because country towns often have a bit of a strange blend of structures, some sort of new office -y looking ones like we have with the brickwork, and then also the older ones which have been there for many, many years before. So that is what I was trying to do here. The elevation change created a bit of a nightmare as well, placing the buildings. Obviously I couldn't put the buildings on a slant like I did for the footpaths. So I just created these little platforms again, trying to make them look even and none of the steps are too aggressive. So again, I feel like it's achieved that natural and realistic look I was looking for. This little corner over here did have a bit of funny terrain work going on, but I couldn't adjust the terrain without putting all the paths off. So what I end up doing later on is actually turning it into a bit of a mini construction zone. So the terrain looks uneven and dug up, but I've tried to mask that by pretending it was deliberate. Shh, don't tell anyone. And I'm just trying to 
yeah, continue to build the town. The buildings come together quite quickly and the rest of the video really is focused on trying to fill the streets with interesting and useful objects to act as cover. I obviously had to fill the gaps under the buildings from the elevation change. And yeah, it was tricky to judge at times. It was a bit time consuming, but we got there in the end. Where do I go to next? There we go. Okay, I'm just playing a bit more with the buildings. I do change these corner ones because I end up creating a little balcony on each side of the main street. I'm going to refer to the top level here as the upper level. It will just be easier. So this upper level that I'm working on now, I did want it to feel a bit more exposed than the alley because that way it encouraged the players not to use it as much but still be a viable option if the alleyway was completely clogged with other players. Most of the buildings you can't get in, but you can see here I am placing a few that you can. Now again, the reason was that reason for that was to give players cover, some degree of cover on the main street. But later they also act as a spawn point. While I have the majority of my spawns in the two streets that go off to the side, I did incorporate one or two spawn locations up in these in the upper area of the town just in case the enemy team did push the other ones back into their spawn. Again, running the risk of being killed from behind if you push too far and too aggressively. Here I create a tiny little park. I am developing a bit of a habit of making some parks in my builds, even one of my World War II trench builds that I did inside the town. I enjoy it. It's a nice feel, especially when you deal with such harsh terrain. It's nice to make something which just looks nice. So that's what I do up here and sort of have it backing onto a, the back of a building. I was trying to create the impression that there was another road behind those buildings and the park was behind it. So again, you can see from this perspective that, you know, there's nothing behind this, but I was trying to create the impression that the town continued further. Here you can see I finally decide on the buildings I will use in the top corners. The reason I chose these was that they had a teeny, teeny, teeny little balcony that you could climb up once I placed the ladder and almost get a vantage point on the main road. Now that wasn't a problem because you can't see the enemy spawn locations from this upper section. So having a vantage point was not a problem at all and I had no problem doing it whatsoever. But truth be told, it's such a small space with very little cover that I don't think I've seen any players use it yet. But it is an option if people want to. Here you can see I placed a statue. I spent a bit of time deciding which one I wanted to use. The space really wasn't that big, so I just went with a smaller structure in the end for the statue and just placed a few trees, trying to make it a nice little country area in the middle. I wanted to create a bit of a story here as if it was a sport town and it was a historic baseballer that originated from there, which is why I've chosen that statue. And yeah, just trying to create a story as I do in all my maps. I do like to create a bit of a backstory, not necessarily one that's direct, but just little hints around the map here and there, trying to give the players that this is not just a single team deathmatch, that it is set in a larger world, if you will. You can see here I place this really dark gravelly surface on top of the on top of the platform that I built. The reason why I did that was because the concrete was quite glaring even through all the trees and while I couldn't get a natural looking texture on those bottom platforms the dark one was the best thing I could do and by the time it's under all the trees it looks relatively natural and just hides some of that shoddiness that was with this particular aspect of the design. As I said, it's my least favorite part to design those little vegetation platforms, but it was a necessary evil just to hide the sort of rough edges of the map. But I, as I said, I will see if I change those in the future. But I'm already planning my next map, so we'll see how we go because it does not fundamentally impact the game. Now you can see me, I'm starting to run through the map, test it a lot more, get a feel for the distances between the bases, etc. And I am nearly finished placing all the buildings as well. And once that comes together, I start building the details 
of the map, starting to fill it up a little. I ran out of, well I didn't run out, but I ran out of ideas for unique structures that I could build around the place, but I spread them out enough so even the ones I did reuse still looked like they were their own unique buildings. I, I hope there's no obvious duplication around the map. But yeah, it's not too obvious. I placed these guardrails on the corners as well so that when you look out to the sides of the map, even though you can't go down there, it still looks like the world has been given some attention that I've detailed every part of the map that the player could possibly see. So that's what I've done with those barriers. I tried looking for something a bit different. I think I found those under the Far Cry 4 category. I was thinking that the Far Cry 5 would have some sort of metal barrier asset in there. I'm sure it is there, but I simply couldn't find it. But those Far Cry 4 ones didn't look too out of place, so that's what I used in the end. You can see here I'm creating a little driveway for the side structures in the spawn streets. I do place vehicles in the end. I actually place vehicles with guns on them, you know, like the big machine guns on top of the trucks. But in the final version of this map, I do actually remove them. I replace them with vehicles that don't have mounted weapons. Because honestly, if a team got their hands on one of those and got it into the enemy team's spawn street, it was just a slaughter fest. Even with the spawn points behind them, it was just stupid. The players got way too trapped in their spawn and it just ruined the gameplay of the map. So when I removed them later on, the game changed drastically. The players used it exactly as I expected. So while I did want to incorporate those gun-based vehicles, I am glad I got rid of them in the end because it just allows the map to be played as it was intended. Now I'm trying to work on this area up here. I was trying to make it a bit more natural, a bit more realistic. It was very tarmac based up until this stage. So I create very rough looking and unkept garden beds on the entry to the service station. It also acts as a little bit of cover as well, even though it won't protect you from bullets, it just adds a bit more cover while you're running around the map. I kept finding loads of cool little details like the fire extinguishers, the stop signs, just loads of things that helped make the map feel alive. I placed a few signs as well. I tried to make it clear to the players that they weren't meant to go down these streets, that the enemy would be in front of them, not to the side of them. So in addition to the map limits that I set, I also placed these roadblocks. So hopefully players could get an idea that they weren't meant to go down there before they even tried it because there was an obvious barrier to them going that way. I played around with the road signs a little, uh, like the decals on the actual road surface itself. I don't think I used too many in the end simply because it wasn't a completely necessary aspect of the build. And you can see I'm continuing to just rough up the service station area, trying to make it look really unkept up here, and also allow some cover for the players as well. I wasn't too sure what to put behind here. I end up going for an open container, almost like its own mini close quarter area within the map. And later on, I even go back and add some more crates, albeit a smaller size. I had some pipes in around the place as well, just constantly finding new assets that worked really well with the map and yeah it was really really good just putting all this together there were loads more assets than I expected in terms of the individual objects for an urban area so that was a pleasant surprise because I wasn't sure having not made an urban map before how quickly I would run out of unique items to use so I make that back area look a bit unkept. Here you can see I'm trying to find a way to sort of camouflage this rough terrain. In the process I get distracted, I find loads of more other items I can use to make the pavement look a bit more detailed, like the letter boxes and things like that. And these assets that I, I could use to make the roofs look a lot more natural were awesome. Having these air conditioning units and things like that really did make each building look unique. And those extensions that you can use really are fantastic. It just adds a little bit of uniqueness to every building and makes it feel more alive. So I absolutely love that for sure. I think I'm about to start 
on the, no I'm not, I'm going to detail the urban area a bit more, I thought I was going to start on the scrapyard. But I put these awnings as well above some buildings, not too many, but again just trying to make each one look a bit more unique. Where do I go to next? I placed those ladders in that I was suggesting earlier. You can see what a small space it is up there. It really is tiny, so I don't think players will use it. It's more of a gimmick than anything. But there was a balcony and it seemed like a wasted opportunity not to let players go up it if they desired. What do I move on to now? Bit of trash can work, a bit of letterboxes. Letterboxes? No. The newspaper dispensers, if you will. We don't have them here in Australia, so I'm not sure of their official title. Obviously not newspapers, but the dispensers is what I'm talking about. And now I'm really starting to fill the inside of the town. Trying to get that nice balance as I did with the alley between having loads of detail and loads of cover, but not cluttering the place too much. And of course, then there's the other challenge of making sure the objects look like they belong where they do. Part of the reason why I gave up on the road decals a little in the end is because I wanted this to be based in an American town, but obviously that means they would drive on the right hand side of the road and it was just screwing with my mind. We, we drive on the left here in Australia, so originally I was putting them on the left side and in the end it was requiring way too much brain power simply for the sake of a few paint, painted signs on the ground, so I don't do too many of those arrows. Now I'm starting to play with the sort of pot plants. Originally I wasn't going to build any trees in the main streets, but I decided against it in the end and plant these little trees around the place. I wanted them tall enough so that they didn't really act as cover, that the, the canopies were high enough so that they weren't intruding on your perspective too much. And I do find a tree that works well for that, but it does add that nice little bit of greenery to the town. Again, the point of this map is for a good fight, but I did want it to feel like a nice place all at the same time, which is why I put those pot plants in. Where do we go to next? We just put more trees in. I use a few different ones, but the vast majority are the same, especially on the main streets. And you'll see hopefully in the gameplay that they really add a nice little bit of green to the entire design of the map. Just placing more trees on the corner here, trying to hide the ugliness of that little platform on the edge. And I started encountering a few physics objects issues. It's, it's really annoying sometimes, it's hard to tell which objects have physics and which don't. And the only way you really find out in the end is by when that map limit thing comes up. So it can be a bit of a nightmare. I detailed a fair bit in the street, I even went as far as putting some license plates on some of the cars. And you can see I use one of the gunner vehicles here, I start placing them down but they do go later on and in their place goes the unarmed vehicles. You might have spotted something really funny back there, the scrapyard that I built, that I'm running through right now, that scrapyard I accidentally well, the recording stopped because it has an hour limit, and I did not realize, so I built that without realizing the game wasn't recording. And yeah, I had to, instead of making it from scratch, because it did take some time, despite the speed build making it look like it went together in seconds, I just decided to undo the entire build and then redo it one step at a time. So yeah, I will try to avoid that in the future, it was a pure accident, but as I said, that scrapyard is actually a closed off area of this map now. So I wasn't too worried about it, if it was a gameplay area I probably would have just deleted it and done it again. But again, a bit of feasibility, a bit of realism had to come into the equation. So I hope you guys aren't too fussed about that. And as I say, it's more set dressing than anything else, which is why I wasn't too fussed about taking a shortcut with the recording and speed build of that particular area. I tried creating plenty of terrain around the place as well, trying to make it look like it was in a mountainous region. Nothing too aggressive, but just rolling hills with the occasional cliff. And it was also tricky getting the trees in between all the little buildings because they were so jagged. But I do close them off quite a bit. 
Players can get out the back of some buildings, but the map limit will immediately come into effect and normally take them back to their spawn. And there's simply no advantage to going out there, so I doubt anyone will try it twice if they do give it a go. Because there's no way to get a flanking position, the town is way too closed off. There's no entry points other than the main roads leading in and out of the town. So I don't see anyone doing it, and if they do, they're certainly not going to be doing themselves any favours. The next thing I do is detail the interiors. It's one of the areas I actually struggle with in Far Cry 5. I'm not much of an interior person, I never have. I've always been outdoorsy style maps, so a lot of these areas really are just a chore in my mind. But I do try and make them look relatively at home. It was a restaurant that I did back there. Here is a bit more of a weapon shop, if you will, or a military shop. One that's been packed up a little, judging by the way I place things down. But this also acts as a spawn location in the end, which is why I try and put some objects in front of the door so players weren't immediately exposed when they spawned. I put some solar panels on the roofs as well, just trying to create a bit more detail. You can see I do some electrical work on the exterior of some buildings. Again, trying to make each one look unique and interesting. And I was getting so far into the detail that I even placed individual trees where the collection tool was not playing as I wanted. And I really am just detailing now. We've still got 10 minutes worth of footage to go, but a lot of it from here is just adding that detail in. But every little detail counts, especially in this map, because most of the objects I place are not just for their looks, they are cover they act as cover they act as blind spots for the players when they are fighting so that's why i was so keen to incorporate so many details throughout the map again closing things off some more i found out after building this map that there are specific doors that you can use for the areas but i just went with a more a drywall look if you like because it wasn't the end of the world now this part here, I wasn't sure whether I should do it or not. I've seen some other people do it on their maps, some really good looking maps. I almost do a bit of a self plug, if you will. I, yeah, include my YouTube account name or my channel name, and I do put it in a relatively prime location. You'll see where I put it in a second, but it's not in your face. So I'm sure it's a bit more subtle. So I was okay doing it because I didn't feel like it got in the way of the experience too much. And it wasn't really in the player's sight line if they were playing the map and fighting through the alley. It was just a little subtle plug for my channel. And yeah, I might not do it again. I'll see. I'll see. I don't think anyone will actually even look up the channel from that little sign if they haven't found this already. But yeah, I'm just continuing to detail. I found loads of graffiti that I could use on each of the buildings, which again brought the town to life, told a bit of a story. I didn't, as I say, make the place look completely abandoned. I just wanted to make it look like it had seen better days, which is why there's no real fire or vehicles on fire and things like that around the place. It was just to create the feel that it was past its best days, to say the least. I'm creating a bit of cliff work here, just trying to create a nice little unique area for the players to look out upon if they looked left or right of their spawn location, or their spawn street, as I have been calling it. And yeah, we're just creating more cover. It was pretty relentless, the amount of detail I needed. As is often the case in my maps, the more I play as detail, the more I feel the, the need to build even more. And it was just a never-ending hole, it seemed, but I did eventually achieve the level of detail that I wanted. We're getting more into the gameplay features now. I've placed plenty of ammo around the place. There's no weapons as such anywhere on the map. I just wanted the loadouts to be the main focus. And I also put a lot of effort into the loadouts themselves too this time. You won't see me do that on camera because it was a bit time consuming. But in the gameplay video, you will see exposure to those different classes that I do create. It's got a nice blend, something for everyone. I didn't include snipers. There's one semi-auto rifle that I do use, but it's not the kind of thing that has the range that you can sit back in your spawn and pick people off with. 
I'm really playing with the fine details now. I add some smoke to some of the chimneys on the buildings, trying to make it look a bit more alive and playing with the natural environment in general, creating a few different things with the lighting effects. So I wasn't sure what time of day to use. I went with, I think it was just before lunchtime, somewhere between 10 and 11 in the morning. It was a nice bit of time, cast some shadows on the place, but didn't make it too dark. And I play with screenshots for a while here. I Do I make the final call? I might not make the final screenshot until later, but you will see. Oh, actually, no, I do. That is the final screenshot right there. But do not panic because at the end of this video, I show you the map name, all the details on screen, so you can find the right one, including its screenshot. So it's nice and clear. The map limits took ages to actually get right because the map was so jagged. Some buildings you could get into, some buildings you could not. So it was a bit of a pain doing that, but that's the beauty of these videos. You don't feel that pain because it is sped up just that much. Again, the trickiness of this was creating barriers that prevented players from climbing on rooftops or anything like that but also mean that they could still get into the cover of those same buildings on the ground floor without encountering any map limit issues. I'm continuing to place some cars around here, creating more and more cover. The spawn streets I end up going back to, after testing the map, it was way too exposed. You could probably, sh if you were lucky, you could actually shoot players from your spawn location all the way to the enemy team's spawn location through the alley. So end up placing some buses to protect everybody from that situation. And again, forcing the players to go ahead and fight in the alley, not pick each other off at a distance. Adding some puddles around the place now, just trying to create loads of little effects, loads of little environmental cues, if you will. And it really was relentless. <laughs> I was placing paper, I was placing crates, everything, leaves just trying to make the town feel more alive. The, the streets up here was a challenge, trying to make that look interesting. It was so wide and open that it did look a little bare. But once I got all those items in, I was happy with it in the end. It had the level of detail that I was happy with. Paper was a big feature of this map. I couldn't really find any other sort of insignificant litter that you could place around the place, so paper really was the main one I used. And also I added some texture to the junkyard over here as well. I even placed some animals. I place a attack dog in the scrapyard. Do not worry, he actually cannot attack you because it is closed off. And I don't believe it's possible to jump over the fence, but if you do, you're gonna be taken back to your spawn anyway. Having that dog there really was just for an audio effect. You can hear him barking in the alleyway and it just creates that nice little, well, not nice, but that atmosphere I was hoping to achieve. You can see here, I'm just making sure I haven't cluttered the streets so much that you can't drive. It's definitely not easy, but again, I did want this to be infantry focused more than anything. So I had no problem making the street a little hard to navigate but it wasn't impossible. So I, I felt like there was a nice balance for the vehicles as well. And by the time I removed the guns from them, it really was just a gimmick having those vehicles in the map, but players still use them regardless. You can see with my spawn points here, I placed them around the areas, put some in the main spawn bar, some in the little side shops on the spawn streets just trying to create that risk if the players got too close to another team's spawn location. I placed these buses in because I did play the map at one point before finishing this recording and again felt like it was too exposed, the spawn street. So I put these huge buses in so that the players had cover if the enemy team pushed them back towards their spawn. And the other thing I realized is that was that the buses acted as a bit of a jump pad to get on the roof of your spawn bar. So I'm placing some barbed wire here. I moved the buses further away and I reckon it's probably still actually possible to jump on top of those bar roofs but it, it's so exposed that I don't think many people are going to do it anymore. As I said they did do it when I tested the map for the first time but this is this footage now is after I tested that map for the first time so I'm really keeping that in mind and adjusting the map as necessary to stop that. 
and they even put some barriers on the top of the roof so you can't use the the part where the roof pitches and then goes down the other side behind as cover so if anyone uses that area good luck to them because i reckon it's almost suicide using that and yeah the barbed wire was a bit of a time consuming process but it did help prevent the players from getting up there it was a worthy addition and we are really now towards the end of the video. I feel like I've said that a few times, but it's just the way we go with these. It does feel relentless. It does feel like it never ends sometimes, both when I am building the map and when I'm commentating on the speed build after. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But yeah, it's just when you reflect upon the build, you forget just how much time you really did put into it. But I think that's a result of just enjoying it. When I'm building the map, yes, it takes time, but I really do enjoy it. And it's so rewarding to jump in and see players enjoy a map. This one is by far my favorite, as I said at the start, and other players seem to really enjoy it as well because I had a few issues. When I came back to edit it this time, you'll see me encounter a lot of publishing issues and there was a weird glitch going on, a red horn error of some sort that took ages to fix and I ended up having to save the map as a new name. It didn't necessarily solve the issue but it was one of the things I did that eventually fixed it. I don't know what really did fix it in the end. So for that reason there are another, as with my previous map there's actually I think two possibly three versions of this map uploaded. It's really annoying that we can't unpublish our own maps. So as I said, at the end of this video, I do have a screenshot of the correct version, its correct name and the date which it was published. So if you go looking for this map, you get the most up-to-date version. The only main change between them is the spawn locations, but they are so important for the gameplay of this map that I highly recommend you download the version that I show at the end here. Because if you download the other ones, you're probably going to play a version of the map where spawn killing is way too easy. So yes, please, 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 if you do download this map, just wait until the end of this video. I show you in the final couple of minutes, or the final couple of seconds even, the correct one to download. I'm just adjusting the playable limit a bit more after testing the map off camera with some real players. Uh, again, finding that they use the outside area. So here is the correct, the correct version. Country, town, chaos. And you'll see I switched to another image here. These are the map details. Please use the version that was published on the 29th of April 2019, as you can see there. The reason for that is that it is the most up-to-date version, as I said. And while I may update the map, the rule of thumb is if it's published on the 29th or after the 29th of April, that is the most up-to-date version that you should download. And I hope you enjoy it, guys, because I am so happy with how it plays. I have had an absolute blast testing it, and there will be gameplay footage of that map in action in real games with full lobbies in the very near future, hopefully within a few days. So thank you guys for checking out this video. We have made it. We made it through 52 minutes worth of speed building. I hope you have enjoyed. And my voice is just about surviving. We are getting there. But as always, guys, thank you for checking out the map. As I say, check out the Sam Place test team if you're on the Xbox One. Consider subscribing if you want to see more Far Cry tips, tutorials, and speed builds. And as always, thank you for the support you guys show. It really does mean so much, and I have a blast making these videos. But until next, next time, thank you very much, guys, and I will see you in another video very soon.